have taken some time and developed our specific purpose and our central idea. We know the direction we're moving towards, and even though you may not use these, you're, you'll still be tweaking and correcting these up until the assignment is due. At this point, you're in a position to start organizing your information in a way that makes sense so that when you write your outline, it'll go a lot easier. So this is important for you as far as simulating the information, and it's also nice as a person that's in an audience and paying attention to a lecture or, or something you know, that you're attending that you can recognize the organization of another presenter. So we have here um, some ideas for organizational patterns or formats, which is also in your book, to help you organize this fast information. So this whole, entire time we've been narrowing down our topic, and depending on, uh, from our informative chapter, which direction you're going, you may see how these will fit in a little bit better. I'm not gonna go over all of them, so as we move into the persuasive chapters, you will see that we will come back and visit some of these and revisit how they work in persuasive arguments along with other types of patterns. So right now we'll focus on just the informative, the informative uh, types of organizational patterns. So first, and I think this one is listed second in your book, um, is chronological. And it's the easiest to explain and that's why I'm starting here. So chronological is also called time sequence. And so you are describing something as it occurs in time, like a process, for example. The first thing, the second thing, the third thing. So, and you know this because you can only describe something going forward in time or backward in time that makes sense. So when we're talking about processes, and we talked about this when we were mentioning in the informative chapter, you know, going to college, for example, you know, there's there's certain steps and certain procedures that you take in order to reach this goal. And if you were to describe that in time sequence, that's that's what would happen. Our, our day's events is in time sequence. If any of you use a, a, a calendar, a, a hourly calendar to get through the day, you're actually using this type of organizational pattern to organize your day. How many of you do that in here? Okay, several of you. Okay, so this is something that you cannot go back in time, and if it, if it does, if there's bouncing around in time, it's no longer chronological, uh, but it's kind of fun to see like in entertainment. So if you've ever seen a movie where they've had flashbacks in time, and Pulp Fiction is a good example of, of how uh, it goes back in time, that they're making the illusion chronological, but it's not. Because it's so forward in time, backward in time, those are the only two directions you can follow. I know one of your examples in here is talking about uh, the powwow celebration of the Native American culture. And depending on the angle that you could use that, if you're going to describe the celebration, you may start from the preparation and then move to let's say uh, the very first first parts of the event, the openings, move to the middle, move to the end, and even the after, after effects and the meeting and the reflection after the celebration. So that, that is an example of using time sequence with one of your topics. Okay, now considering your other topics, sorry I erased part of them, is there uh, any way that you can see time sequence working for your organization. Okay, so how would the history of this culture? Well, I would start with like, first they got married, then there was a party, and then people <coughs> kept on partying. So, so that, that, again, you know, we're talking, historical events are a really good example of how to use this time sequence or the progression of the celebration or the progression 
of an event. Yours might fall into that depending on how you decide to narrow down your topic as well. Um, we had food, history of food, actually the preparation of food, here we have a, an interest in here, the preparation of food is a type of time sequence. So if you're making something, it has to go in a specific order and you can't go back in time, you can't go back and take the salt out. Once it's in there, it's in there. You have to keep on moving forward. So that's another example of how chronological works. Going outside our topics, you can see chronological in other things, like the ice storm we just had is an example. Okay, you can't go back in time with that, but it started with a little rain, a little cold weather, and it developed into this thing. A mass of sun came out, melted everything. That's an example of, of how we see this in our lives. Um, other examples could be medical conditions or catching a cold. I like that example. What are the first symptoms when you get a cold? Red eyes. Okay. Red eyes, itchy throat, tired, sniffles, and then what's next? Okay. So after you go through the denial period, then you're, you get sick and and it, it follows a certain progression, the sore throat, the headaches, goes to your lungs, comes back up, and then 10 days later, you start to feel better, or you realize you feel better, you're actually getting better the whole time. So th that's an example of how chronological works, the time sequence. Now going back to your projects, you may decide that for one main point, you may need to do a history, or you may, be, or a chronological, just talking about the process of something and then talking about this thing in a different way may be appropriate. So, uh, for example, the roles of family, of the family structure in Vietnam, can be an example of that. If you want to talk about maybe some historical changes in the past to, to modern day Vietnam in the roles of family members. You may spend time doing that in a first main point and then say, okay, now that I'm focusing on modern day, this is what's happening. So that's, a, that's an example of how you can use that, maybe not for the entire outline, but for one point. Okay, that one's the easiest one to understand. Let's get a little bit more complex. Let's talk about spatial organization. In your book, it might be on the next page, to talk about spatial organization. Somebody could read to me the definition surrounding this organizational pattern. Spatial organization means arranging items according to their location, position, or direction. That's probably one of the better definitions I've heard because that's simply what it is. And there's a lot of different ways you can look at this. The key is, is that whatever direction you start moving in is the direction that you continue moving in. So you don't bounce around. So it has a similarity like chronological. And these two can link up together in, in let's say, one outline. But spatial organization can move in a lot of different directions. So you're describing something as it occurs in space or virtual space. So the first thing you do is, or let's look at it this way, you can move forward, backward, you can go up, you can, you can go down, you can go diagonal, inside and outside. So from the inside to the outside, like for some of our uh, individuals that take anatomy, you may be describing the body in, in a spatial way, but you're always going in the same direction, okay, clockwise, counterclockwise. So those are all spatial, describing things spatially. And then um, couple that off with chronological, for example, trying to describe to somebody how to get to your house from SCC, you know, the first thing you do is you find your way out of the parking lot, then you take a right, then you take a left, see the McDonald's, et cetera, et cetera, 
And, and so you're putting these two together in order to describe how to find your home from one point to another. So landmarks are a good way how to describe spatial, but something spatially. And that may be, again, you can be creative about this. You may say, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is describe where in Italy the foods originated. And you describe that, let's say, in a clockwise or counterclockwise fashion, or north to south, uh, south to north, something. And then you can go and describe each region and the different types of foods if you, if you move in that direction. So that's another way to, to use this. Moving outside of your projects, you deal with this all the time. Here at the college, the building is organized spatially. And, and I know it's confusing because we have a lot of different wings, but they've done things along with chronological to help us know where we're at within the college by the lettering systems. The A section, the B section, the C section, and on and on. So, so the college is actually spatially organized. You know, or looking at a building and, and that has several different floors. You know, which floor do I have to go to? You're, you're applying this. And then the big one. I love this one. Our solar system. Okay. Where do we start with our solar system? Where do we always start? So we always start from the inside. We go to the outside because that's the easiest way to describe it. If we went from one side to the other, we'd be naming Pluto twice and you know be all confusing. So starting from the sun, I'd love to test things with this. Okay, what's the first planet? Pluto. Right. From the from the inside oh, from the inside to the outside. Which one's the red one? Oh, it's right here. The red one's Mars. The small, really, really warm one. Saturn? No. Saturn's <laughs> Mercury! <laughs> What's the second one? This is a really bad story. <laughs> Just let you know I might cut this out. It's not Mars. Is it Saturn? Saturn's like way. Uh, no. Second one closest to the sun? Second one closest to the sun. No. Venus. Or the third one. Venus or Mercury? Mercury's first. Then Venus. Then, is it Venus? I'm not sure. Earth? Mars. Then Mars. Then what's next? The moon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so we won't be tested on this. <laughs> but if you ever take a class where this is relevant, you might want to get up to speed on our solar system. <laughs> All right, but that's a good example of spatial. All right, next is cause and effect. Somebody, can you read cause and effect for me in our books? Uh, yeah, so organization by discussing the situation and its causes or a situation and its effects. Okay. Now this can be used either for an informative or persuasive presentations. You're talking about a condition or issue, like we discussed in our informative chapter. You may, this may be something that you, you use. You may be using cause and effect. You could use cause and effect as one main point, or you could use it as your entire organizational pattern. So um, let's see if there's anything here that would, okay, so yeah, actually family members in Vietnam, that could, that could be considered a cause, it, you may not use this, but um, some conditions that 
are present and the effects of that in how family members will interact with each other. So that, that's an idea and it's still informative. The way how, let's say, one generation may change to another could be considered a cause and effect. Now these examples that you have here, a lot of them, I don't see the cause and effect, but you can certainly see this in other situations. So if we're going to look at strictly the informative perspective, you can, you can look at yourself as being college students. You're using a cause and effect applying in your life by being a college student. So going to college, is that the cause or the effect? Could it be both? your perspective. Okay, let's say it's the cause, which you're in now. What are you predicting the effect to be? Graduation. Okay, and then? Better job. All right, and then there's all kinds of different things that go along with that effect. So that, that is one way. Or studying, taking six hours on a day off to study. You're doing that as a cause. Did you? I know she liked it. Because what do you expect the effect to be? Okay, better grades. So, so we're, we're applying cause and effect right now in our lives. Uh, and then, of course, we can look at the weather patterns, which is something that we're, we're looking at very closely because we're in bad weather. So the cause and effect of weather, and if, if it's snowy enough or icy enough, the effect could be that class is canceled. So those are some, some things. And then, of course, from that, what happens from there? Then we have to make up work you know, and you know, all that other stuff. So cause and effect, you can see in the conditions or issues. I only see that relevant for maybe one of your topics in here, but you may, you want to remember this because as we go into the persuasive presentations, this can be used in also uh, persuasive arguments. So consider that, don't forget it, even though you may not be using it right now. Uh, we're gonna skip problem solution because that's only for persuasive presentations. Um, Pro-con could be informative. It's typically not for this first assignment, and I don't see it applying it here. But that's just basically where you're weighing the pros and cons of something. If you're using this in informative, you have to take a neutral stand on, on this. So it could be in our everyday life, talking to a friend, making a decision, that may be making a decision about say taking a job or staying at another job and you could be weighing out pros and cons without bias or deciding in a more serious scenario whether you should take a medication weighing out the side effects of the medication it may be maybe more or less than, than taking it so so that could be another way if a physician is presenting that in a way it's in a neutral way usually there's bias in Okay, so that's, a, that's another um, area that you're probably going to use that or consider that within your next assignments. Um, now, for primacy, recency, and motivated sequence, we won't talk about that, but the topical is either or, and that is the order of your presentation is determined by how you decide it, it should go. So, as I mentioned earlier, you can mix and match these. So if you want to talk about the history of something first and then go to the regions of the area in a spatial way, that, that's a type of topical where you're just mixing and matching. Another way to consider topical is by um, the example that they had in the book where they have logical sequence, the logical order within the central idea, and that's saying that the first main point will be this and the second main point will be that. So you actually pose that within your central idea. So if you write your central idea with logical divisions, then you're going to be probably following this because you've just imposed that order. Now, Again, you can mix and match these within there. So a sub point can be the history of something and then move 
move into the next thing. But if you're talking about two specific things, as that first example said, then you have to follow that that same sequence. <coughs> And I know that's a lot of information to put out to, to you as you're still gathering information. But at this point, do you think you have enough to help get you in the right direction? Okay, excellent. Lots of head nods. Okay, we go ahead and turn off the recorders. Thank you for that.